Right, let's return to our lead story of Transport Minister Spoon Bella's suggestion to reduce the legal alcohol limit for drivers. Let's get a bit more analysis. We're joined now by Howard Dembovsky, the national chairman from lobby group Justice Project South Africa. Howard, thank you very much for coming into the studio this evening. What is your response to the minister's suggestion? Fantastic news. It's about time. Um, with there's too much confusion that, that's been caused by telling people 0 0.05, 0 0.24, etc., etc. And this confusion arises from the fact that we actually tell people that it's not not okay to drink and drive. It's okay to have some drinks and drive. And um, a lot of people get very confused with that. For example, um, I've seen and heard lots of people saying that equates to two glasses of wine. That equates to two beers. It's not true. It equates to one castle, uh, sorry, two castle lights, but it doesn't equate to, to one um, black label, for example. Same thing goes with wine. You get light wines, you get heavy wines. If you go and buy the plonk that, that the guys in Cape Town go and buy, um, you're going to be hammered on one glass of that. So what we need to entrench in, in our road users in this country is the simple philosophy that if you're going to drink, then do not drive. Plain and simple. How, how do we move towards it? What you're talking about is not something that's so easily legislated, Howard. It, it's more a, a paradigm shift and, and a way of life that South Africans need to grow into. How, how do we achieve that? I agree with you. Look, uh, legislating it is only going to go part of the way to, towards it. Enforcement is very, very important. Um, in the five months ended the 11th of May, 2011, uh, 12,516 people had been arrested uh, for drunk driving. And the problem is, that when, when one starts asking how many of those people were convicted, the answer is, we don't know. Okay, the State versus Hendricks case that w was um, in the, the Cape High Court, um, the man was acquitted. He was four times over the legal limit. We have to improve enforcement. The, uh, we keep on saying that this approach has to be holistic. We need to talk to people from a moral conscience point of view. We need to have proper law enforcement. We need have, uh, to have uh, proper ways of actually dealing with these issues. If you cannot convict people in a, a criminal court for, for drink driving offences, there's, there's no point in bringing in any legislation, to be very honest with you. You know, we could say whatever uh, limit applies or doesn't apply. At the end of the day, we've, we've taken uh, proposals to people like the RTMC and the Law Enforcement uh, Technical Committee telling them this is how we propose we take this matter forward with respect to drink driving. Um, we can guarantee that you will have prosecutable results within 14 days as opposed to now four years in some cases where we've been sitting waiting for drink driving blood test results to come back from state labs for example. Um, this has to be a holistic approach and if we have a real uh, deterrent i.e. that you are going to be convicted for for that offense and uh, i'd like to just add that that part of our proposal was one of changing the the the, um, the consequences thereof i.e. for a first offence, we would not like to see people incur criminal records that affect them for the rest of their lives. What we'd like to see is those people being subjected to community service, working in trauma units, etc., etc. That will act as a very real deterrent. If you say to somebody, I'm going to take up 12 hours of your Saturday every Saturday for the next 12 months, and I'm going to have you mopping up blood in a trauma unit, suddenly there's a lot more trepidation that comes into that, as opposed to telling somebody Oh, you could get a criminal record, which a lot of people can't actually relate to because of the fact that we have incredibly low conviction rates in this country. But how do you respond to the fact that, that given that we, we, that we do have a backlog of cases in our justice system and that our, our cops are very open to bribery, as are our drivers, and that this will further complicate that situation? It's definitely going to further complicate it. You know, as, as it stands at the moment, there are a number of cops operating in a number of different areas who make people blow into handheld breathalyzers and they quote ridiculous um, levels to them. For example, I know of an American visitor who was told he, he had blown 6.5. Uh, well, at 6.5, not only would you be dead, but you'd also be mummified. But at, at the end of the day, um, corruption is a huge problem. 
we believe that only by working with organizations like ourselves that can monitor these situations, implement these situations, and work with, with the, the traffic authorities, the National Prosecution Service, etc., etc., can we bring this to a halt. Corruption is going to dismantle this country. If we carry on like this, it really is. But we've got to have legitimate law enforcement. We cannot continue with this current model where it's basically a financially driven exercise that makes a few companies very rich and uh, a, a few municipalities similarly rich. Uh, Howard, what about the issue of alcohol in advertising? I mean, that's a booming industry, very difficult to regulate, mm. but sending out a message that's possibly, in, in some instances, contrary to what the Transport Minister and, and people like, like you are trying to achieve. Well, the Minister of Health, um, for example, uh, proposed a ban on advertising and actually said, um, I believe it was in Parliament, that, that, that if it meant giving 450 million rand a year to the advertising industry that would lose out from uh, alcohol advertising being banned. Um, you know, then he would do that. Well, you know, I, I just find that kind of thing ridiculous. First off, if we were given 450 million rand a year for anything, we could bring a halt to drink driving in this country. I promise you we could, because with that kind of money, not only could one implement proper law enforcement, proper prosecution services, etc., etc. And let's just remember that you have to pay for blood tests. So if you're going to have them done by private labs like we are actually suggesting gets done, then um, that money would go a long way to, towards doing that. What we would like to counter-propose with respect to that, is instead of having a, an outright ban on the glamorization of, of alcohol, um, which is not going to go down well, and it's going to get fought, and it's going to get won by those people, rather bring in a taxation where, say, 10% of their budget gets put towards a fund to deal with drink driving. Let's have that kind of situation. Then, with that kind of money, I can assure you we can launch the most negative advertising campaign you've ever seen. And when we're off air, I'll show you some videos. I promise you, you will never drink and drive again. Okay. Well, okay. it's fantastic that I'm not doing it already, I think, <laughs> Howard. That's a start. Indeed. Thanks the, the, very much for your time this no, evening. Sorry to cut you off there. Sure. Uh, but we are running out of time. Uh, Howard Dembovsky, the national chairman from the Justice Project South Africa. A reminder of our headline stories on the channel at this hour. The Transport Minister wants to lower the drunk driving alcohol limit.